Shalom. Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, it's the brother Aina. And I'm the brother Sha'ar. Khan, and uh, from GMS Dallas camp, we just wanted to get into uh, a uh, lesson regarding the video. Uh, Lord willing, you brothers uh, saw just now uh, regarding, uh, regarding threshing. Uh, sifting and uh, winnowing and uh, all of these terms are terms that are pretty much uh, unknown to to our to our nation simply because uh, you know we don't grow our own food here you know we are uh, uh, under the curses and we have to buy our water and we have to buy our food and so we don't know the process of agriculture but us being Hebrew Israelites we're getting back into our culture getting back to understanding uh, the aspects of our daily life because that was really what a majority of our people were and they were you know in the field um, and uh, you know uh, take, taking care of their land uh, so without further ado uh, we just want to get into some uh, some prophecy all right and uh, use that uh, that video as a as a visual you know as we go into these words and uh, and Lord willing this is an edifying lesson come this is Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 and it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. All right, and um, that individual John was talking about, of course, of course first and foremost, was Yahweh Shai. And ultimately, that's what Yahweh Shai is doing. That's the process that we're going through right now. With us being the hopeful elect, Everything that is within us is being purged out of us, and that's through the Holy Spirit, through us being reborn, okay? And John pretty much used the example of water, and then he used Yahweh Shai referring to baptism as fire. Because ultimately, we don't want to be caught up. Us being the hopeful elect, the men of the Lord, we don't want to be caught up within that physical fire that's to come afterward, because he's talking about that as well. And that's the baptism that Yahweh Shai said he needs to baptize with, and he said, I'm not straightened until it already be kindled. And that's alluding to Luke, the 12th chapter, the 49th verse. So we need to hope and pray and continue that we endure, continue to be refined, that our inward man is renewed, renewed, all right, through the tribulation that we're going through. And that's the baptism. 
Okay? Now let's continue. In verse, in verse, did you have something to say? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I just had a quick precept uh, to okay. kind of back that up. Uh, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. It says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. And uh, when you read Isaiah, uh, you know, it talks about a, a couple times it mentions how our, our, our people are full of dross, which is another um, another uh, extra, mm -hmm. um, what's that, I should say, uh, side effect, exactly, you know, exactly. Of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the desired element, which would be uh, silver, okay, or gold, or whatever type of iron that you're trying to get out of, out of, out of the metal. Well, it's the same thing with this idea. Mm -hmm with purging uh, and sifting, exactly. getting rid of the excess, all right, and getting down to the pure, uh, 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 clean, uh, desired element. That's right, that's right, that's that refuse, you know what I'm saying, the leftover that's going to be meant for whatever purpose it's fit for, right. you know what I'm saying, but the finished product after what's being sculpted or what's being purged is the part that matters to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and that's the part that's being refined, and when you look at the nation of Israel in a whole, this is going to happen to the whole nation as well. Exactly. You know, the whole nation is being sifted. And the dross is the stuff that's going to be taken away that doesn't matter. And the stuff that's left over after the dross is the part, is the piece that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah has been working on. Yep. But let's get back to the scripture here in Matthew, the third chapter, the 12th verse. It says, whose fan in, is in his hand, the his being Yahweh Shai, right? Mm -hmm. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire god god and so we want to get into you know a lot of these words in this verse because if you're not familiar with agriculture in the way that uh that we went about uh purging um the seeds from uh from the from the wheat um uh, from the wheat uh with the well, not the kernels but the uh the husks from yeah. the wheat husks then it might it is might be a little bit hard to visualize so when you go into that word fan if you click on it uh it, it basically breaks itself down but when you when you look when you when you go back to that video at the beginning of the of the uh of this of this video you'll see how the farmer he took the he took the uh he took the uh the threshed uh, uh, husks and the and and the and the and the threshed uh, seeds, and he winnowed it. When you winnow something, you are blowing, or you're taking a fan and you're and you're blowing away the chaff, right? Mm -hmm. You're blowing away the excess. You're purging out That's right. the extra uh, uh, dross, so exactly. to speak, right? And so that word fan uh, in the Greek is uh, Strong's G 4425. Do on. Do on. Right. That's how you pronounce the word, and it means a winnowing shovel. So they would use a shovel or a fan, okay, to purge away that um, uh, that uh, that excess um, those excess husks, okay. And so that's uh, the analogy that John was making to Yahweh Shai, okay. Mm -hmm. We can, right. can go back to the. Gone. Yeah, that was it. Okay. It says, "Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor." Now, yeah, that word, uh, that word purge is also edifying, too, when you go into it. All right, and that's the spirit. That movie Purge, you know, just came out. Going into what? Getting rid of uh, uh, the Israelites out of the, out of the, you know, out of that island specifically. But if you watch the end of the movie, it went into how uh, the secretary wanted to push for, for the entire nation participating in the purge. Because they wanted to get rid of all of the Israelites in in that uh in the uh in the uh in the country that's right and ultimately when you when you look at it like that that those edomites that are doing that are doing nothing but carrying out the will of yahweh bashim yahweh shah mm -hmm. you know he's putting the minds on these devils to do that so he's using these devils as that instrument with teeth mm -hmm. as he had talked about you know what i'm saying that weapon as you go into esau's the, the prophecy of esau and how he was going to rule the planet earth so he's using esau as that sword that he created him for to to um to execute his desire, the his yeah. being the most high. Yeah. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Right. Okay. Now this is that word purge when you go into it and I'm gonna allow him to say it. Strong's G twelve forty five. Diakatharizo. Diakatharizo. And when you go into that word it says to cleanse thoroughly. Alright, to clean thoroughly. And when you go into the process of cleaning something, that's why in the previous verse 
John the Baptist said, Indeed, I baptize with water, but whose shoes, him who come in after him, whose shoes I'm not willing to bear, shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. When you go into the word baptism, that word means to be clean. All right, so that baptism process is the purging process, and that's being taken place. Except for fire, I mean, water will clean you, but it doesn't clean you thoroughly, but that fire will clean cleanse everything. Mm -hmm. You know, fire is the ultimate cleansing agent. Fire is the instrument used to, to go through the process of what's called sterilization. And that's what's going, that's going, what's going to happen to the nation of Israel ultimately. But when you look at ourselves being men, working on ourselves, you know, our, as, as the scriptures say in 2 Corinthians, the, the fourth chapter, though our outward man perisheth, our inward man is renewed daily. When you go into that, that's that baptism that we're being baptized with, with fire as Yahweh was talking about. And as what was stated previously, Yahweh is going to be the one that's going to actually send forth that fire that's going to physically purge or baptize the rest of the chaff, okay, or the rest of that dross that the brother was going into. Because ultimately, again, it says to cleanse thoroughly, meaning nothing else is going to be left over because it's going to be cleaned thoroughly. Okay. All right. But as we had stated, as we had read here, when we read it in Matthew 3 and 12, when you go into these examples of, um, again, going back to it, you go into these examples of the fan as we went into and then purging. When you use these examples, it shows forth how our nation was and how we um, how our profession was named the husbandry. How the scriptures always use examples of the husbandman planting, sowing the seed, beating into powder, doing these things. When you read these references within the scriptures, it's good to look into these things because it always resorts back to our main profession, which was husbandry, planting seeds, sowing. Because ultimately we were the first farmers. We were the original farmers. Look at Adam. What did Adam do? Adam was, was given commandment over the whole planet Earth. He was named to be king of the whole planet Earth. But when you look into it, he had understood the animals. He had understood how the plants work. He had understood everything. Adam was the master of husbandry. And when you go into all the sons of God, his children going down to Enoch and Noah, that was Noah's profession. Why is that? And how do you know that? Again, Noah, the spirit was given to Noah to give animals, all those animals commandments to get into the boat, meaning he had that close that close relation to the animals and how to sow the earth, how to do things to the earth. He was in that unification with the earth. And ultimately that trickled down to our nation when you go to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, and they were all good at that. Even when you go into Jacob and the 12 tribes, what was we known for doing? When we was in the land of Canaan, we were farmers. We were laborers, we were husbandmen, okay? And that same tradition carries on to right now. The only difference is we're here within the land of our captivity. We're here within the city. You know, and, it, and, and we'll go back to, and this is the topic still, but just alluding to when you go to the land right now, our holy land, you see it's in a dead, destitute, desolate state because Jerusalem is gone from there because we know Jerusalem to be a people before it's a place. But the reason why you see the land and the straits that it's in right now, because when we was over there, we actually take taking care of the land because we were given commandments on how to take care of the land. You know, but you got those gutter rats living over there right now. They don't know what the hell they're doing. That's ultimately why we have to get that land back, because once we get that land back, the earth will be in its original state. But ultimately, this process that we're going through has to be taking place first. Just wanted to go into the examples of how husbandry was within our whole culture, goes into our heritage, goes to how we conducted ourselves. We were people that were known, were known farmers and known how to till the land and take care of the land. All right. And that's happening through the spirit, first and foremost. And it's going to ultimately, everything's going to come back into effect and it's going to recircle its way around as Yahweh Shai and the elect ran on the planet Earth again. Okay. okay. I got uh, two, two precepts to back up what you're saying, brother. Okay. Uh, the first one is in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. All right. And uh, it's uh, verse 9. Uh, I can read it right here. It says, uh, For ye, I'm sorry, for we are laborers together with the Most High. Ye are the most high's husbandry, ye are the most high's building. All right, so the point is in the middle of that verse where it says, We are the most high's hun uh, husbandry. Okay, and so when you read the, uh, when you read the, uh, uh, the passage that we read earlier in Matthew, the third chapter, it goes into how uh, Yahweh Shai is going to purge his floor. Okay, he's going to take the fan and, and fan. That's talking about the nation of Israel. Us, the nation of Israel is, go is going to experience that. Okay. And then also uh, going into the purging of the floor, okay, uh, with fire unquenchable. I want to get this one in Ma uh, Malachi chapter 4. 
in, uh, in verse, verse one. one. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. I'll read it for you. Okay. This is Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And that day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Right. So focusing on the first part of that verse, the day that cometh is the day that is that is uh, uh, that Yahweh Shai is going to return with fury, okay, and fierce anger. Of course, he's going to come in the chariots and uh, and the uh, uh, and the uh, laser beams that are going to come out of the chariots are going to burn up uh, a lot of the two thirds, but also <clears throat> but also the thermonuclear missiles, okay, are going to burn uh, America as an oven, okay, and so it's going to be only two options you either get saved or you get destroyed that's right all right and when you're sifting and when you're threshing and when you're winnowing your uh your uh your seeds okay out of the husk you're either saving the seeds or you're getting rid of the excess that's right okay that's right i got a quick precept i want to pull up because um the first scripture that we went to went into baptism right and ultimately this lesson was going into is a is a representation of baptism you know what i'm saying being cleansed thoroughly the process of being cleansed and what has to take place and what the byproduct is afterwards you know what i mean this is uh first peter chapter three and i'm really going to start at um uh, i'm going to start at verse 20 it says which sometimes were disobedient and once salaki when once the long suffering of the most high waited in the days of noah all right while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water all right, so that water represents that cleansing agent that had cleansed the planet Earth before. And as the brother had made the example of the husks and the chaff in that winnowing process, as we've seen in the video before, that was pretty much the first, the first actual purge that had taken place with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Satan. That was the first process that had taken place with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because as you've seen, it says only eight souls were saved. And you had millions of people on the planet Earth that got blown away. The only difference was it wasn't with fire. It was with water, right? Like we had used the example in Matthew, the third chapter. But this next verse, check this out. Now, it's using Noah in the flood and the eight souls that were saved within the representation of baptism, right? Because John said, indeed, I baptize with water. All right. So this was the first death. OK, it says the like figure. Now, look what he's comparing it to. The like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward the Most High by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai. And what does that go into? That goes into the baptism of fire that Yahweh Shai is going to do. All right? Because that's how we're brought back to the Heavenly Father. That's how we have a good consciousness, that inward man re being renewed, that purge, that fire being put to us. So we can be able to endure and so that dross and that leftover will be left out. So our conscience will be clear and we focus on the resurrection of Yahweh Shai. All right. That was it on that one. Okay. Now, what scripture did you want? Uh, well, I mean, that word um, in Malachi chapter four. And okay, one, where let's it, get it. Yeah, where it says uh, stubble, just to prove that it's the same deal um, in the let's, Hebrew. Yeah. I think it's quash. Yeah, right, right there. I passed. Okay, yep. yeah. Yeah, quash. Okay, and uh, when you mm. when you look into it, it means stubble or chaff. That's right. So a lot of times when you see the word stubble in the Old Testament or the New Testament, it's, it can be replaced with the word chaff, which is we know now after watching the video, the excess or the remainder of uh, of the wheat. You know, mm -hmm. after you thresh it and you sift it and you winnow it. That's right. Okay, and um, uh, I'm gonna get this one in. Uh, what was that one in, in uh, Luke where your house shots uh, told uh, Peter he was going to sift uh, Satan with desire? desire yeah, yeah, I got him. you. I got you. I'm going to pull that up right now for you. All right. This is um, this is Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Right. You see that? So we, as we just watched the video, OK, what happens to the to the to the chaff? What happens to the husks that you don't use? It gets blown away, all right? And when we, and when we read uh, Matthew 3 again, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 3 again, we'll see what happens to the, uh, to the, to the excess. But he said to sift you, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that he may sift you as wheat, okay? So anything that's not uh, profitable to the Most High, anything that's um, the water, 
Anything that's uh, that's uh, uh, not a seed is going to be given to Satan, man. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And we need to actually look at these things and focus on ourselves. Focus on this walk that we're doing. Focus on, on the salvation that's at hand. Okay? Because we're going through a process right now. We're all feeling this right now as Satan is desiring to sift us as he had desired to sift Peter. So ultimately, this is the process what we have to go through. Just as Satan went up to uh, the Lord as he desired to sift Job. And the Lord that gave him the commandment, you can go on and do what you do, just don't kill him. So we're going through this process right now. As these things are happening to us, ultimately this is to make us better. Ultimately this is hardening our armor. Okay, that dross, that leftover, that refuse is being purged out. This is what has to happen in order for us to level up and be upgraded through the spirit. This is what has to happen in order for us to receive those new bodies and get delivered into that chariot. Okay, because it's not going to be an easy walk. And best believe when a laborer, when a husband goes and sows seed and does goes to that process, it's not an easy process. It has to take place. All right. It's a lot of work that has to be involved. This is the work. This is the straight gate. This has to be done. All right. Again, this isn't our outward man. That's what we should be worried about. Our outward man is going to catch them elves. But our spiritual man is the peace that's going to be refined and renewed. And, and, and pretty much the flesh is going to be cast out as that stubble ultimately, man. Mm -hmm. When you go into it, the flesh is what's going to be that stubble. The flesh ain't going to make it into that chariot. What's going to make it into that chariot is the spirit that the Lord gave us. And that new body is going to be the finished product what comes out of that chariot. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is, I got a precept. This is Amos chapter 9 verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among the nations. Mm -hmm. Right? Like we brought up the example pretty much of when you go into the when you go into the winnowing process, you know, when you go into that winnowing process and have the fanner, because who's the fanner ultimately? That's Yahweh Shai. John made that statement. Okay, the fan is Yahweh Shai. And that fan blows and separates the chaff from the seeds. Okay? And after you go through that, you still might even have some chaff left over within the seeds. What do you do afterwards? You take it through the sifting process. You sift it and you shake that chaff out, and the rest of the stuff that's left over is the seed. That's the part that's useful. That's the part that matters. That's the part that you plant in the earth and it brings forth more fruit. Yeah. You know, that's the part that Yahweh Shin Yahweh Shah is focusing on. And when you look at a when you look at a weed, I'm sorry, not a weed or a wheat, but anyway, weed, whatever they all carry seeds, when you look at a wheat, you know, you see the product of the wheat. You see the chaff, you see all that stuff. You see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But once you go through the whole process of it, the only the littlest pieces are left over, and that's the seed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna continue. It says, for lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the sieve. Yeah. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Right. All right. Go ahead, brother. Right, man. You know, so when the Most High uh, purifies and purges the excess from the from the desired uh, from the desi from the desired uh, thing, okay, from the desired food or whatever, um, you know, none of those smallest the smallest uh, uh uh man of the lord or the smallest believer isn't going to be cast down like the scripture says whoever believe has any trusted in the most high uh and has been confounded right because it says like i said none of them are going to are going to fall to the ground so we have that faith and that trust that as long as we believe in yahweh bashim yashai he's not gonna he's not gonna leave us uh high and dry so to speak exactly you know and exactly. all of the and all of the all of the wickedness that's amongst uh, those men who know that they are Israelites, those wicked men are going to be revealed. That's right. They're being revealed. Mm -hmm. You know, they're being revealed right now as we see it. Okay. You know, you have certain of them that can't take reproof. A lot of things are happening. They're going to be taken out. You know what I'm saying? They're not willing to go through the sifting. And we need to pray and hope and continue to focus on ourselves and hope that we're that worthy sacrifice. Hope that we're that finished product that gets left after the whole fanning process. Okay? okay? Because we don't want to be part of the ultimate fanning process when Yahweh Shai fans the chaff from the seeds and burns the chaff up in the fire. We want that to go on with us inwardly so we don't have to go through it outwardly physically. Right. You know, because that's the second death. And that's the baptism that's going to cleanse all. Yeah. All right? That's right. So this is the word sift. And that word is nawai. And it says to quiver, to totter, to shake. Right? Because when you go, you shake. You, you shake the sifter. And you're shaking that extra, that excess chaff away from the seeds. It's a separation process. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? And that stuff that's not needed is being shaken away. It says to reel, to stagger, to wander, to move, to sift, to make move, to wave. And let's see here. It says tottering, to toss, to shake. So pretty much that's ultimately what it means. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, once you're actually within that art of husbandry and you either sift it or you, um, or you, um, what's the word I'm looking Winnow for? It. Winnow it. Yeah. You know, either or doesn't matter about which process comes forth because each and those processes are going to have to take place regardless. You know what I'm saying? Whether you winnow it first or sift it first, at the end of the day, that chaff has to be separated away from the seed. Mm hmm Okay? Mm hmm What you got, brother? Uh, yeah, I had, a. Uh... This in uh, 2 Timothy real quick. Okay. It's uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 21. That's the spirit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, actually, really quick, Baba Gashaw, can you do me a favor? Start up. Let's 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 start at verse 5. Okay. And then we can jump down to verse 21. Kind, kind. All right. Kind, brother. It says, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? Now, when you go into that word masteries in the Greek, that word is pronounced Stephanos. And when you go into that word Stephanos, it means to actually have a crown. It means a crown. That's how you say crown in the Greek. All right. And that's ultimately how you receive the crown to go to the masteries. How do you go to the masteries? You go through that sifting process. You endure through it. All right. You understand that that extra dross is being taken away. You understand that those extra pieces of us have to be cut off and have to be mortified. Okay. We want to make sure that we're presented as that chaste version that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah is looking for. And the process to be that chaste version is to go through those, th those, um, those afflictions, go through the chastisement, so we can be that finished byproduct that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah wants. All right, and that's striving for masteries. All right, verse six says, "The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits." Right now, this here is another example. Another example of the lord using the example well being the lord putting the spirit on paul to let timothy know the example of husband beer again the example of farming again again the reason why because this was a known part of our culture this is how we conducted ourselves so there's always numerous examples of farming lingo when you go into the scriptures because that's what we were absolutely so it says the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits when you go into the husbandman who was that that's the one that sows the seed all right, and that's where you get the word husband from and you get the word wife that husband plants the seed in the wife, right? Mm -hmm. That sperma when you go into that word seed, okay, but that ultimately goes back to a farming technique that we used to do Okay, and that's still being done as you've seen in the video mm -hmm. one who plants the seeds mm -hmm. Okay, so just wanted to go within that example and ultimately if you want to uh, be first partake of the fruits You got to make sure we have to make sure that we do this thing that we strive for the masteries yeah. and we do this thing lawfully because there's no other way to go all right you can't go through the winnowing process and expect some of that chaff to be left left over your house i said all that stuff's got to be burnt off right. every last bit of it right. that's why it has to be sifted and that's the process we're going through right now okay, okay? let's jump down to verse 21 okay. unless you had something to say well i was going to say you come know on, the, the purpose of the purpose of doing the uh the threshing and the and the sifting and the winnowing is ultimately to make the bread, right? Right. So you can't make bread out of chaff with, with, with seeds and then chaff in it, Heavens you know, or, or you know, or, or with with the seeds and and the um, and the husks in it, you know. That's the point of the process, right? That's right. So I just want to you know kind of bring that out. Beautiful point, brother. I'm gonna read verse 21 for you. Okay. This is Second Timothy 2 and 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Right, and so purging yourself from these things mean these things are, are iniquity, all right? Ultimately, the things that lead up to sin and, the, and that leads up to impurities in ourselves, right? And when you purge out that old leaven, okay, you become uh, clean in the eyes of the Most High, right? You become acceptable in the eyes of the Most High, and that's what uh, 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 Yahweh Shai is looking for, men. That are that are cleaning themselves and sanctifying themselves uh, for the uh, for the return uh, for his return. That's right. You know. That's right. Khan, did you have more precepts? Um, I had one more, but you... okay, I got a quick one, really quick, okay. and then we can end it off on your precept. Right. This is Luke chapter twelve, verse forty-nine, and here's a here goes that fire example again. Right. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I, if it be already kindled? 
but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened until it be accomplished? All right, so again, there goes that word baptism, which we had brought up in a few other examples. And John had used this example when he go into it again in Matthew, the third chapter. Yahweh Shah said, clearly said, I have a baptism to be baptized with. And knowing that it's talking about the fire, why is that? Again, what John said. And then when you go to the previous verse in Luke 12 and 49, right? You know, so when it says, and I'm not straightened until, until it be accomplished, right? The way Yahweh Shah said straightened, this example of it is meaning to be in that position of difficulty, meaning that I'm, I'm going to be in that position of difficulty until it happens. It's going to be things you got to go through until it happens, man. You know, these are things that have to happen. These things have to be cut off and cast into the fire. All right. Because we don't want to be cast into that fire. Ultimately, verse 51 says, suppose ye that I'm come to give peace on earth. Nay, I tell you, nay, but rather division. Right now, again, mind you, the process that we've seen in the video what we're going into. You got the wheat. All right. It's there. But the wheat ain't going to be the wheat's not the important part. The wheat has to be threshed. The wheat has to be beaten. When you beat the wheat, what comes out of it? The husks come out of it. All right. Well, the so now come out of the, the, well, the, the seeds come out. Yeah, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the water. The seeds come out of the husks, right? But what else comes out of it? The chaff comes out of it, right? All right. So that's the division process within itself. You're separating the seeds from in the husk. I'm sorry, the seeds in the chaff from the wheat, which the husk carries, right? And then we go through the winnowing process. You pour that into the fan, right? And that fan blows that, the, the chaff away mm -hmm. to the point where that's more division that's taking place. Yep. Excess stuff that's not needed right. is taking place to the point where the seeds are left over, right? right? And then even within that, you have some chaff left over. So what do you do with the refuse of that? You put it in the sifter and you shake it and you rattle it and you totter it to the point where the only things that are falling through at the bottom is the chaff. Well, in the cheat this with the seat or either or some the chaff will sometimes stay yeah. it depends on the it depends on the, the sifter. sifter yeah yeah you know what i'm yeah. saying sometimes the seeds that left over the chaff falls yeah. sometimes the seeds fall and the chaff is left over yeah. ultimately that remaining stuff that's left over is useless and it's going to be burned that's the baptism we have to separate ourselves from this world we have to separate ourselves from this flesh we have to be able to mortify ourselves to be mortified and cut off these things that are less needful for for us because that stuff's not gonna make it. And I'm gonna say it again, these physical bodies that we have isn't what the Lord is looking for. That's not the piece that's important. It's the inward part that's important. The stuff that's not seen with bodily eyes. That's what's gonna be taken up into that chariot. That's gonna be the important part. The physical body is gonna be left over. This body is useless, you know? It's the inward part that's left over. And that's what Yahweh Shai is looking for. You know, and we as numerous examples you can use within these because again we can uh, elude that as well to the nation of Israel in this whole process, alluding to the nation of Israel right. and how that dross and that chaff is going to be burnt off, and that's going to be the refuse of the nation of Israel. And those seeds that are left over is that elect. But we got to be willing to cleanse those, have those inward parts cleansed in order to be part of that number of being the ultimate seeds. You know, go ahead, brother. Uh, this is uh, John chapter 15, uh, verse 2. Okay, <clears throat> this is uh, this is uh, dealing with uh, this is dealing with grapes and uh, and vineyards, but it's the same. It's the same idea with uh, with husbandry. Uh, so it says, every branch that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay. So, uh, in the event of you having a vine, a grapevine, all right, you have limited resources within a plant. You have the soil, you have the air and the water, and that plant is, has to bring forth fruit. Well, if you've got a branch that's not bearing forth any fruit, you've got to purge it. You've got to clip it off. And what do you do with that, uh, that, that branch that's not bringing forth fruit? You, you burn it. You cast it into the fire, right? And so that's why when we uh, are, are planted, okay, when those seeds are, are planted, okay, we are supposed to bring forth fruits, okay? Meat for repentance, which is what? Doing the work, you see? And if you don't do it, then you're gonna, then you're gonna be burnt up with fire unquenchable, like how it talks about in, uh, in Matthew, the third chapter, man. That's right, brother. No? That's right, Akia. And I actually got um, a scripture. Did you have another one? I got a scripture. Um, I wanna pull up really quick. Give me one sec. Hold on, one sec. It's in the Apocrypha. All right. Um, this is uh, Second Ezra, chapter eight, 
and I'm going to start at verse 2. All right. Well, I might as well start at verse 1. Okay. It says, And he answered me, saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold, whereof earthen vessels are made, right? Now, when you go in it to ask the earth, that just pretty much means to observe the earth. Look at the earth. And it goes into the mold. That means the dirt. All right. It's talking about all the dust, all the dirt, all the ground parts. Right. You know. So it says, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. There be many created, but few shall be saved. So I answered. So answered I and said, swallow then down on my soul, understanding and devour wisdom. And let me see, I think that might have been. No, 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 no. I'm going to keep going. It says, verse 3, there be many created, but few shall be saved. So I answered and said, swallow them down on my soul, understanding and devour wisdom. For thou hast agreed to give ear and are willing to prophesy. For thou hast no longer space than only to live. O Lord, if thou suffer not thy servant, that we may pray before thee, and thou give us seed unto our heart. And culture to our understanding that there may come fruit of it. How shall each man live that is corrupt who beareth the place of man? So you have certain examples that, that stood out right there, seed and culture. You know what I'm saying? And ultimately, you know, when you look at the customs of our culture and see how these things have taken place, when because we were men that observed the earth. That's the art of husbandry, right? Being able to know the earth, how to plant, how to sow, how to do these things, have to be an observer of the earth. And also to know that there's gold that's left over when you sift, even when you sift gold, you get that dirt and you sift it and it's gold that's left over. And he used the example of culture. You know what I'm saying? Going within our culture, observing these different things and understanding the same process takes place with seed. You plant the seed and fruit comes out. You plant the seed, wheat grows. Whatever grows, there has to be a separation process that takes place. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't going to eat the tree. Right. You're going to eat the fruit that comes out. Right. We ain't going to eat the wheat. The seeds is the beneficial part that's needed out of the wheat right. and everything else is burnt. Right. All right. He, the angel, when he spoke to Ezra, used the example of the earth, right? The mold thereof. Out of all that dirt, you have gold that's left over. That's the part that matters and what's going to happen. Everything else is irrelevant. And when you look at it, a lot of it's going to be burnt up anyway. You know, ultimately, we go into it, man. It's the inward man that's being renewed. Ultimately, the moral of it, the inward man is being renewed. And when you go, when we go to certain examples of the scriptures of farming techniques, that's what it's ultimately saying. This has to be renewed. This has to be purged. This is the part that matters. This is the part that's important. Everything else is completely irrelevant. Okay. It doesn't matter at all. Okay. You know, and ultimately you look at that again within the nation of Israel as a whole. All right, a lot of these guys that's going off, being reprobate, talking to mess, doing whatever, they ain't going to matter when it all comes down to the nitty gritty. The two thirds going to be destroyed. They're going to be thrust out. They're going to be, well, they're going to be, um, they're going to be um, uh, windowed, you know, and then they're going to be sifted. And that important part is that election, that chosen piece that's left over. That's the part that's significant to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. That's the gold. Okay? Did you have something? Man, bro, I got let's end it off. Let's, let's end it off on what you about to bring it off. Yeah. Con, con. All right, this is Psalms uh, chapter one. Um, might as well read verse one. Uh, this is Psalms chapter one and one. It says, "Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree." Planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. All right. Now the point is in verse four: the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Woo! So when you visualize that video, okay, that we that we uh, played at the beginning, all right, the ungodly are like the chaff that are going to be blown away driven away in the wind verse 5 therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous all right for yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish just like how that chaff blew away to the side of the screen all right never to be seen again all right 
that is how unimportant and how um, uh, useless the the two thirds of the nation of Israel are to the Most High, man. That's right. Compared to to the to those who actually uh, 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 follow His Word, okay, and and worship Him, all right, through His Son, and are giving reverence unto Him, man. That's right. All right. So, hey, Lord willing, uh, this is an edifying lesson. You know, to you brothers, uh, with that, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom. Shalom.